you'd see spray painted across walls, Satan, get out of our land. Jesus, come. Jesus, you're our only hope. You're our only salvation. That right there is powerful. That is powerful. If you really stop and think, what happens if, if the United States just called a three-day prayer and fasting and in droves, millions came out and started praying, God, we need to be restored. We need to have your heart. We need to fall in love again with you. Um, wake us up. It's astounding, really. Um, but uh, coming down here, it's exciting. My, my desire is to see people come down from the United States and from Germany and from Italy and from everywhere and come down here because the people here, they know desperation and they know hunger. Okay? Um, but what God's doing is He's bringing people here, He's drawing them here like a magnet. And then with that magnet, what He's doing is He's putting a spiritual hunger and a spiritual desperation inside of them. So within the time that they're here, they start looking at things a different a different way. That God's giving them different eyes to see. And then when they go back home, the things that didn't satisfy them before, they just satisfy them less. And the only thing that can satisfy is Jesus. The only thing that can satisfy us now is Jesus. The only thing that can satisfy them is Jesus. And so what happens is there's something inside of us that, that wakes. It's like, I need something filled inside of me that I didn't really know that I needed. Um, and it draws us close. And that's one of those things where it's a choice, really. It's either going to draw you closer to his heart or it's going to make you more numb than you were before. It's really up to you. Um, but God's inviting people down here. He's inviting them because he wants to pour his spirit into them. He wants to pour his hope in them. He wants to pour his joy into them. It's one thing that I've seen more than just about anything else is the people down here have very little possessions. Um, I could tell you of stories of just driving and people living on, on the uh, center median between a street. And I look over and there's, there's a little girl playing with a half a doll. And her dollhouse is broken pieces of rubble. She's got joy. She's got hope. She's happy. You've got kids. You've got a string and a piece of metal. And he's walking around like it's a car. You look on his face and he's got hope. He's got joy. These people don't have a lot, but what a lot of them have is hope and joy. I look back at the United States, we've got almost anything we could ever want. We've got ponies and pools and houses and cars and the next games and the, everything. And what are we missing? Hope? Joy? You know, um, we know there's something more, but we keep thinking that it's going to be found in some material possession. It's not. Um, these people don't have much. But what they have, I'm starting to realize is we're the ones that are poor, blind, and naked. Um, that they're the ones that are clothing themselves in righteousness. They're the ones that are clothing themselves in, in a lot of the things that Jesus talks about clothing himself in. Um, yeah. God is restoring Haiti. And I believe that He's doing it so we can quicken the process of making the bride one. Because he says that he's coming back for a pure and spotless bride. He's not coming back for a half-hearted bride. Um, he's not coming back, you know, when the time is right. He's just waiting, counting down. It says no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will return. Not even the Son. And I believe the Son doesn't know because he's, he's waiting for his, his spirit and the bride to say come. Now, the spirit is already saying come, but the bride doesn't want him back yet. Isn't that kind of a crazy thought that the bride doesn't want her groom to come back so they can get married. Um, it's astounding, really. But the hope in it is that he is going to come back for a pure and spotless bride, which means a pure and spotless bride is going to be formed. He is forming her right now. And I think that this is part of the process. He's bringing people here so that he can infuse his love and his passion inside of them and his fire inside of them and bring a unity. These people are, are living much like the Acts Church because they have to rely on each other. They're the ones that are setting the example for a lot of the people coming down. They're the ones that have to live by faith. They have to live by trust that, you know what, I might not have enough food for me or my children today or tomorrow for the next week, but God will provide. You hear a song and they, I mean, one of the songs you can hear them singing over and over and over is, you know, even if the rain doesn't fall, even if yeah, nothing else happens, God's going to send a rain. And the, the point is, God's still going to find a way to provide the things we need when we need them. And even that, we're going to re rejoice. We're going to praise His name because He's faithful. That right there, that's what's going to wake up the bride. That's what's going to bring the bride together. And this is not just 
you know, this part of the ride, that part. Denominations need need to come together. We need um, countries to need to come together. We need anybody that says that Lord is Jesus needs to come together. And so this is a quickening process for the bride to come together throughout the, wor uh, the world. In which case, when that bride gets together and cries out in unity, Jesus come, I think he's going to rouse from his position in heaven and come back with a fiery, violent love and say, Satan back out, this one's mine. Um, and that's what we really need, you know? That's my desire, that's why I'm down here, is because I want to see Jesus come back. Um, I want him to come back soon. And for him to come back soon, we need to get the bride on the same page. So that's a little bit of what's going on in Haiti. Um, my suggestion, you want to be blessed, come down here, see it, uh, live it, and let some orphan child pray for you. Rock your socks out.